Being given water, uh, 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 snacks, yeah, right? yeah, like yeah. cookies and dates, yeah. and, things like that. Do and umbrellas because of the heat yes, and the yes. sun. They're being That's given. the man, the one that said Yeah, 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 yeah. Think so. yeah uh, at first we were really confused, we didn't know what was going on. We saw a large crowd of both men and women gathered around this uh, tent, it seems like. Um, once we got inside and got to speak to them, we realized it was a Boy Scout, a Saudi uh, organization uh, for the youth teenagers. Uh, and what they do daily during these uh, blessed days is that they help the pilgrims, they give them uh, things like water, snacks, they give them uh, umbrellas. That was a really hot item. There was, they were literally fighting over that. Um, it was, um, if I could summarize it in one word, I would say intense. It was, it was very stressful. I mean, these kids got a lot of reward them. I, I, found it, I found it very difficult to do just for a few minutes. They do it hours on end every single day. Uh, may Allah reward them and all the people who contributed uh, to such a project, Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, sales organization, as I do call it. Yeah. 
souls are not really, they don't reach the level of, of being authentic. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and the, uh, the, the reason behind this is the many, uh, many narrations, alaykum as salam wa the many narrations of these uh, different uh, uh, sightings of, of a hadith uh, are either weak or have some uh, fault in the narration's connection or the, the narrators themselves or the, the actual uh, isnad. Uh, however, Al-Bani rahimahullah has cited, he said that uh, such a uh, statement about a practice of worship wouldn't be uttered by the companions or the followers of the companions unless there was a thread leading back to the guidance from the Prophet Muhammad <laughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, we... we sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Um, and why is that important? Why is it important to take you know, the sayings that you said are authentic or not authentic? I mean, they're all meant to be sayings of the Prophet. These things about authentic or not no, authentic. Sorry, sorry. Well, uh, to you know, be sure that one is uh, following an authentic hadith or uh, something that is sound by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one would be sure that they would be following the exact path of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, if it's, uh, if it's a weak hadith, or, we're not, or fabricated, the weak hadith, we're not actually required to follow it. The fabricated, we're required to reject it completely. So here we have this, this uh, clear... Uh, understanding of how to uh, how to follow the Prophet in the preserved uh, uh, sources of the both the Quran and the Sahih or the authentic Sunnah to be more specific. Uh, to inshallah make this a productive uh, gathering. Let's go ahead and maybe uh, limit it to uh, the recitation of two uh, verses each one of us, and then after that uh, we'll. Uh, mention some of the uh, greater themes and objectives of Surah Al-Kahf. Uh, uh, let me give an introduction, inshallah, before we begin. Uh, and uh, we were talking about the uh, recitation of Surah Al-Kahf. And these narrations that don't reach actually the level of being authentic, even though they don't, but there is a hadith, there is a saying of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam that is considered to be sound. That is, whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on, on the night of uh, Friday and uh, all the way up to the uh, day of Friday, uh, meaning from sunset uh, of the day uh, on Thursday uh, all the way to the sunset of the day of Friday. This time, whoever recites it, uh, recites Surah Al-Kahf, will be given a light, uh, illu illuminated light from their place to the Bayt Al-Atiq, the ancient house of of Allah. And this time frame is, is Yom of Jummah. Yes, it Yom of Jummah. It starts the day before, the night before, and goes to the next day. True, yes. And this is where we find the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad so Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is clear to uh, uh, give us uh, an indication of uh, this surah has a specific place, uh, and this specificity is to, uh, to recite it during this time. However, it is not limited to this time. It's also uh, preferred to recite Surah Al-Kahf uh, during the time of the week at any day. Uh, we know that some of the companions were known to recite the entire Quran every three days. Some of them every seven days. So uh, to recite Surah Al-Kahf at any given day is, is a virtue and the benefits are reaped by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Let me begin by uh, also reminding our uh, brothers uh, here and ourselves and also the viewers, uh, Abu Abdullah Jazallah Khair reminded us that Surah Al-Kahf also has another virtue and that is uh, that whoever recites the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf or in another narration the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, they will be uh, protected from the tribulation or the fitna of uh, of the Masih al-Dajjal, the imposter, the imposter Dajjal, or the imposter Antichrist, so to speak, and this is uh, really in direct relevance of the theme of the chapter. In the Quran, brothers, we have what's known as Maqasid al-Suwar, the themes or the intents of each uh, chapter. Each chapter is like a unit by itself. It has specific uh, intentions to be crossed over or to be uh, conveyed to the, to the reciter and the listener. The entire Qur'an has a, has a basic and main theme as a unity. The coherent uh, 
uh, relevance or the coherence between the chapters and the, between the verses and the ending of one chapter to the opening of another chapter is amazing how this book is, is united in its, in its theme even though it was, it was revealed uh, on a, on a uh, gradual basis. Over a long time. On a, on a period of 23 years, this is uh, the, the case with the revelation. However, you find relevance, unity, and coherence from the beginning of the Qur'an to the end of the Qur'an. And the more one uh, uh, studies the Qur'an uh, deeper, the greater the, the, the coherence appears. The understanding of that coherence. And it, it appears uh, to, to an extent that uh, uh, really uh, mesmerizes the, the reciter, the reader, and brings the person into a state of awe and a state of recognition that this, this is not the works of any human being or any creation. Rather, this is the... This is the divine words of Allah. These are the divine words of Allah Azza wa Jalla. The creator of the heavens and the earth. The creator, creator of, of all things. Yes. Yes. And it being the miracle that uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla has given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And proof uh, for or against those who accept or reject. On the Day of Judgment, the Quran will be an argument for or an argument oh, against. against. SubhanAllah. And, and Dr. May Allah one, make it for an issue regarding that as well too. SubhanAllah. That it is the only unchanged, preserved revelation of Allah, of the creator of the heavens and the earth, left on earth. That's true. The only preserved one. That is true, yes, that is true. And this is. I have a suggestion. Go ahead. Is it possible to let you finish your address and then we comment and ask questions later? Because we don't want this to become a dialogue between two people. I think this, this is. is this how we can I think we can do that, inshallah. Inshallah, okay. We will do that. May Allah reward you, Akhi, Dr. Abba. Uh, طيب, uh, uh, we, we can inshallah limit it to the, the recitation now and then after that we can go further into the, into the uh, yeah, any small talk inshallah. We have a brother coming in, Sheikh Munir in a little bit and we'll, we'll uh, uh, enjoy his company. Uh, but let's go ahead and begin with Surah Al-Kahf. I'll open the recitation uh, and then <coughs> where I stop, inshallah, the brother continues for two or three verses. And we can, inshallah, uh, by doing so, cover at least uh, the ten. We can cover the ten verses, the first ten verses. No, The brother is still, still learning yeah. to, to read the, some of okay, the... Well, okay, can, can, if you go bring the... Uh, the translations. Not translations, but they have the Qur'an, akhi, uh, in one or two. Here's one. They're waiting for you there. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'll begin, inshallah, to utilize the time, and then when the brother comes back, or you can begin, inshallah. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point. You got to kind of be careful with that. And then also, you know, we get caught up in the, 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 uh, the hustle and bustle of, of normal life that we're living in. Maybe I have a project that I'm working on, and they're just banging all over the yeah. place or something like that. So you got to kind of take the time out for those things because they need time. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you can't just keep pushing them off uh, in other places. Yeah, exactly. And uh, a lot of times I struggle with that. And, you know, alhamdulillah, my wife is pretty helpful in that department. Yeah, yeah. She basically uh, manages them. But uh, definitely uh, they, they need attention. You know, in in in, in the disciplinary area. Um, I think in our situation as well, we're here yeah. with our families, with our, the family, our extended families. Yeah, exactly. So it's the kids, it's just so. the mother and the father. The mother <laughs> and the father. If it was no else, aunt, no uncle, exactly. no grandma, no grandfather. So they have, they're missing out in that interaction with yeah, them. So cousins. they need to get it to someone. Yeah. Mommy, yeah, right. daddy, mommy, daddy. <laughs> I'm with you like 24 7. I can't give you any more of my time. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. So I think raising kids, raising children here in that aspect of yeah. it is a bit more difficult. Yeah, the, you're the right. Attention, you're right. The, the, what's the, word? the attention seeking is more. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But that's the same thing I was thinking. Like it made me want to think about like a housemate or something like that to try to give my wife a break from uh, having to do everything. You mm. know, like the cleaning, the I cooking. Like, uh, and really uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, in America, I would never think of something like that. Yeah, but <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. In the uh, over like. Uh, the Western stuff, you'd probably just put them into a kindergarten or a yeah, crash right. or something, you know. You'd or or we'll have those away. extended uh, 
Let's take the family. Like in Europe. Spencer, because you are you're with uh, Europe and. Uh, yeah. Passport. Yeah. If you are a poor man like Egyptian man. <laughs> Oh. I told this guy he came on he has the European Union passport and he came with the uh with the Egyptian one yeah, and, I, and I told him atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayyi lana wa hayyi lana min amrina rashada wa darabna ala adhanihim fil kahf sinin adada ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وجدناهم هدى وربطنا على قلوبهم إذ قاموا فقالوا ربنا فقالوا ربنا رب السماوات والأرض لن ندعو من دونه إلها لقد قلنا إذا شططا هؤلاء قوم اتخذوا من دونه آلهة لولا يأتون عليهم بسلطان بين فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا طيب brother you want to continue وَيُهَيِّئْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مِرْفَقًا وَتَرَى الشَّمْسَ إِذَا طَلَعَتْ تَزَاوَرُ عَنْ كَهْفِهِمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَإِذَا غَرَبَتْ تَقْرِضُهُمْ ذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ وَهُمْ فِي فَجْوَةٍ مِنْهِ ذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم باسط ذراع باسط باسط ذراعيه بالوصيد لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم رعبا ولملئت ولملئت منهم رعبا وكذلك بعثناهم ليتساءلوا بينهم قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فبعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر أيها أزكى طعاما فليأتكم برزق 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 منه وليطلط برزق منه وليتلطف برزق برزق منه وليتلطف وليتلطف تلطف it's light أخي ترقيق وليتلطف ولا يشعرن بكم أحدا جزاك الله جزاك الله خير وياكم نكست أخي وعبد الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنهم إن يظهروا عليكم يرجوموكم أو يعيدكم في ملتهم ولن يفلح إذا أبدا وكذلك أثرنا عليهم 
يأملون أن وقت الله حقا وكذلك أثرنا Uh, yeah, we got this ajum ajum tongue that we can't get around these things. وَكَذَلِكَ أَعْثَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَعْلَمَ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٌّ وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا إِذْ يَتَنَازَعُ إِذْ يَتَنَازَعُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَمْرَهُمْ فَقَالُوا أَبْنُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فَقَالُوا بَنُوا عَلَيْهِمْ بُنْيَانًا رَبُّهُمْ أَعْلَمُهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَعْلَمُهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَعْلَمُهُمْ بِهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَعْلَمُهُمْ بِهِمْ لا ما أعلمهم أعلموا بهم أعلموا بهم قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذ لنتخذنا عليهم مسجد لنتخذن لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا سيقولون سيقولون ثلاث رابعهم سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم ثلاثة تر تر رابعهم قلبهم ويقولون خمستهم سادسهم ويقولون خمسة سادسهم ويقولون خمستهم سادسهم خمسة خمستهم سادسهم لا مش خمستهم أخي خمسة سادسهم أوكي خمستهم سادسهم خمستهم سادسهم رجما بالغيب خمسة سادسهم كلبهم الرجم قلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامن وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراعا ظاهرا ولا تستفت فلا تمار فيهم أعد فلا فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفت فيهم منهم أحدا ولا تقولن لشيء إني فائل ذلك الغدا إلا أن يشاء الله واذكر ربك إذا نسيت وقل عسى أن يأدي يأديني ربي وقل عسى أن يأديني ربي لأقرب من حال أحد أخي أحد وقل عسى وقل عسى أن يأدي يأديني ربي يأديني ربي لأقرب من هذا رشدا جزاك الله خير بارك الله فيك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولبثوا في كهفهم ثلاثة ثلاثة مئة سنين وازدادوا تسعا قل الله أعلم بما لبثوا 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 له غيب السماوات والأرض أبصر به وأسمع ما لهم من دونه من ولي ولا يشرك ولا يشرك في حكمه أحدا واتل ما أوحي إليك من كتاب ربك لا مبدل لكلماته ولن تجد من دونه ملتحدا واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغدوات والعشي, بالغدات والعشي يريدون وجهه 
بالغدات والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عينات عنهم تريد الزينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تتع من أغفلنا قبله قل ولا تتع من أغفلنا قبل ولا تتع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع واتبع هباه وكان أمره فرطا أحسنت جزاك الله خيرا Of course, uh, just a reminder, the brother, when he began, Jazallah khair, Brother Muhammad uh, Abbas, he began by saying, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Now, the, there is an opinion that says that this is applicable, and there's no problem, alhamdulillah, but the proper position is really when you want to recite from the beginning of the surah, both the isti'adha and basmala are applied. You say, uh, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم and then if you if you right if if you begin let's concentrate إن شاء الله بس if we uh, want to begin from the beginning of the surah, we say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. But if you want to recite from the center of the surah, or within the surah, inside the surah, you say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, and then you enter into the recitation of the Qur'an. Because the command in the Qur'an is, when you recite the Qur'an, uh, say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, or seek refuge in Allah from Satan the cursed. However, the basmala, is always mentioned in the beginning of the surah. And this is really the proper position by the, the scholars. طيب الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين And a quick reminder for myself, this is the day where the Prophet uh, reminds us to uh, uh, mention salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. I am... Uh, reminded by one of the scholars, Imam al-Shanqiti of our time. He says that uh, I am uh, ashamed to come on the Day of Judgment and find that uh, my uh, salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam on Yawm al-Jum'ah were limited to 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, where I can uh, give salutations more than hundreds of times. Uh, it doesn't take more than a few minutes. And the Prophet has advised us. He said, this is the day when you give salutations upon me. So uh, let's remind ourselves, brothers, during the day, the entire day, just say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, wa ala ala Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim, wa ala ala Ibrahim, naka hamidun majid. Or just say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or you can say, Allahumma salli ala nabi ala Muhammad. Or say, alayhi salatu wa salam. In many different ways, the most perfected way to say it is what's known as a salatul ibrahimiyya. That is to combine both the Prophet Muhammad and the Prophet Ibrahim. And this is really relevant to our time now in Hajj and the time of the 10 days of the Hujjah. So by saying, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid, this is the perfected form of saying salutations upon the Prophet. And we are promised that by every salutation uh, we do, the Prophet will return ten back to us. Allah. Can you imagine the honor, brothers? It's, it's, it's unfortunate that we neglect these matters and that Iblis, Shaitan, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, is able to uh, 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 dismiss this from our, from our daily uh, uh, actions in Yawm al-Jum'ah. If only we gave it time and made it our endeavor during the entire day, Salat, and then Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammad. After the, the set, dhikr or reminders uh, or remembrances of Allah Azza wa Jal, we put in our uh, agenda uh, during the time of Yawm al Jum'ah to uh, invoke the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon his family. And it's an easy reminder, it's an easy remembrance. You don't have to, uh, all of us know how to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, yes. alayhi salatu wa salam. Yes. The reward is immense, brothers. Do not, do not let shaitan uh, fool us in these, in these uh, precious times. 
طيب, uh, what we want to do right now, brothers, after reciting, of course, inshallah, each and every one of us will recite Surah Al-Kahf on their own if we, uh, if we have the opportunity after we're done, inshallah. Uh, but as a reminder for us and the viewers that this is, this is a practice that should be done on Yom Al-Jum'ah uh, if you want to reap the rewards. It's not mandatory. It's something that is voluntary, but you, you are promised great uh, rewards and uh, great, uh, great benefits, inshallah. Inshallah. This chapter, as we were reminded earlier by Brother Abu Abdullah, may Allah reward him, that it is uh, a reminder of the fitan, the tribulations and the trials of this, of this life. And the greatest trial of this life, for those who will be present at that time, is the trial of the Antichrist, or the imposter Dajjal, Masih al-Dajjal. That trial cannot be faced or confronted except by the guidance of Allah. And all, really, all needs the guidance of Allah, but the severity of that trial by itself, or in itself, has, has been told to us by the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. The Prophet said, at the time you will need to remain uh, free from, from following the path of Dajjal, because people will leave their homes, they will migrate from towns, they will migrate from areas that they lived in. When they hear of the Dajjal that he has appeared, they want to see this, this this, uh, this beast that Allah will send with, with different uh, abilities and powers to try and test the, the people of that time. And the Prophet, when the companions said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what should we do if he comes out, if he appears? The Prophet said, if he appears in my time, I am his, I am his opponent. I am the one who will take care of him. The Prophet is telling us that he's, this is an immense and an extreme fitna that uh, it needs to be confronted by the guidance of Allah and by the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad <laughs> In this we find the Prophet telling us that the recitation of the ten first verses of Surah Al-Kahf or the recitation of the final ten verses of Surah Al-Kahf by memorizing them really is better or reciting them will repel the fitna of Masih al-Dajjal and in the knowledge of knowing his arrival and the signs of his arrival also as the prophet said that no other prophet gave his people the signs and the prophecies and the foretellings of the of the arrival of the of the masih al-dajjal as i did the prophet muhammad sallallahu so we have the information and as they say knowledge is power if you have the information and you are anticipating the coming of this beast and this fitna then be ready for it by clinging to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad <laughs> This said, in relevance to the concept of fitan and tribulations and trials, Surah Al-Kahf, brothers, is a unique chapter. And this will make Surah Al-Kahf and its recitation every week more desirable by the will of Allah. What is the theme of Surah Al-Kahf? The theme of Surah Al-Kahf is to introduce to us the main trials that the believer will face, the main tribulation, tribulations that the believer will face, and the means of repelling these, these fitan. And this needs to be a continuous reminder for the believer. It needs to be a continuous endeavor that the believer really faces these trials, and then when, when, they, when these trials come along in life, we know how to deal with them. The first trial that Allah mentions in Surah Al-Kahf is the trial of clinging and holding firmly and steadfastly to the deen, to the faith. What is the example given in Surah Al-Kahf? Anyone? The people of the uh, cave. The people, people of the cave, the, the youth. Yes. The youth of, of the cave, the youth of the, of the cave. What did they do? They tried to practice their religion. The authority and the, the government were uh, opposing the oneness of Allah. They were opposing the faith of monotheism, the faith of worshipping none other than Allah. So what did they do? They migrated. They left the town holding firmly to their belief. They were amongst the, the, the rich families of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the town. They were wealthy. They had everything they needed. And they were in, in their younger age uh, in life. You know, when, when a person is young and they have the wealth and everything available provided for them, sometimes the desirous ways of life take over. 
But these youth, uh, uh, as the story is, is revealed to us in Surah Al-Kahf, what they did is they gave up all this and held firmly to their deen because they were told, you have to leave your deen. We won't let you practice your religion. Your faith is unacceptable. If you want to live amongst us, you have to uh, uh, shun your faith and, and live the life that you have as a desirous way of life. But they left their life, they left the wealth, and they went into a cave. And by the will of Allah, because they did this for the sake of Allah, Allah gave them that opportunity to become a lesson and a sign and a means of guidance for all mankind, specifically the believers, after their time. And the people of the Kahf, by the way, are recognized by the people of the book also. Yes. The story of the, of the youth who went to the Kahf. And this was in the time of the Prophet, where the, the Jews came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam challenging him, telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you truly are a messenger of Allah, tell, tell us, us about, these things. about three things. Yes. And he specifically uh, mentioned, uh, they mentioned, who are the youth that went into a cave in history? And this is when the revelation of the Quran about the youth of uh, Al-Kahf, or the youth who went into a cave, was revealed. What I find amazing about this, uh, Dr. Umar, is that um, some of the Mufassirin say regarding these youth that they didn't know each other before they came to, to, the, to the cave. They were like separated. They weren't like a group, collective group beforehand. You know, they came together, and then when they went to the, together, one came one after the other, and they formed like this new body of people, the believers. You know? So I think that was really nice because they were individual, but Allah brought them together, brought the believers together. MashaAllah. Yeah. Yes, and, and this, uh, of course, uh, again, it, it reminds us that really the deen is the, the uh, driving force. And if we keep firm on our deen, Allah Azza wa Jal will make the means for us. Uh, and this is, this is not just something that we repeat, brothers. This is something that is experienced. Wallahi, people, uh, laymen uh, of belief, brothers who are, who are uh, within the devotion and commitment of following what Allah has commanded, Allah has made for them signs and ways and uh, united them with brothers and, and have preserved their deen for them and elevated them into ways they could not imagine. This is number one tribulation. What is the second tribulation in Surah Al-Kahf? In Surah Al-Kahf, of course, after telling us about the, the uh, youth in the cave, in the end Allah tells us what, what is the means of repelling this fitna. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ And be patient and endure and stick with the ones who call to the way of Allah. In other words, uh, Allah is telling us to uh, be uh, uh, within the company of those who are sincere to Allah. Because the, the, the company that you, that you stick around have uh, a very direct effect on your behavior your thoughts, uh, and there are very few people who are able to uh, rise uh, from uh, uh, environments that are corrupted and become a beacon of light by themselves. And this was the case with Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why did Allah call him an ummah, a nation by himself? Because in the midst of the people who were polytheists and the people who are uh, uh, disbelievers, Ibrahim alone rises at a young age. Uh, Allah tells us uh, that he gave Ibrahim the guidance at a very young age. And he refused the practice of, of uh, 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 worshipping idols, even though his father was one who uh, fashioned statues and sold them in the market for people to worship them. His very father, the one who had authority over him in his home, yet he was able to deliver himself by the will of Allah, and uh, find uh, the guidance of, of the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is rare. This is rare for one individual to come out of an environment, uh, but it's guidance for us. It's guidance for us, people who are living in environments today in the West who don't have many Muslims around them or might have neighbors who are not Muslims. Allah is giving us the example of an ummah, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, that you are able to follow his path. You have the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And further on, uh, when the person or the believer uh, uh, associates themselves with believers, 
uh, you find that uh, a collective level, uh, a group uh, 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 level uh, of uh, adherence to the teachings of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad uh, Sallallahu Alaihi brings forth uh, more commitment, more devotion. The Prophet tells us in a sound hadith, alaykum bil jama'ah, be uh, be vigilant to stay with the group. In another hadith, the Prophet tells us that the wolf, and the wolf here is a resemblance of the devil. The wolf eats from the flock that which is alone, that was separated from the flock. So here we have guidance from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hayakallah, brother. Ahlan wa sallam. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. MashaAllah. Hayakallah. Ahlan wa sallam. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. Introduce yourself, Rahim. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fahim Kaka. Fahim. From uh, South Africa. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. It's been a beautiful experience thus far. MashaAllah. Allah accept that. It's, 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 it's even a more beautiful experience to be with all of these Hujjahs. Jazakallah. Welcome, welcome, brother. Welcome. MashaAllah. Yes, indeed. And you were actually, MashaAllah, involved in reciting and then. Inshallah, we'll give you the opportunity to recite. Uh, we you were asking uh, about the second, the second trial, uh, Doctor Umar. Yes, uh, we'll give the brother an opportunity yeah, yeah, to recite. Yeah. Okay. And then, Furuta. Yes, where did you stop, Akhi? Uh, at number twenty-eight. Uh, uh, Surah three. Surah al Inshallah, after the brother recites, we'll continue. Yeah, inshallah. 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 Surah Al-Kahf has uh, five, four main and a fifth uh, additional uh, fitna uh, that Allah Azza wa Jal reveals to us, telling us about, and the means of repelling these tribulations in, in the ways that are pleasing to Allah. So we'll finish after this is done, inshallah. He's in the wrong class. It's, uh, it's over. No, no. Okay. <laughs> 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 وقل الحق من ربكم فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليكفر إنا أعتدنا للظالمين نارا أحاط بهم سرادقها وَإِنْ يَسْتَغِيثُوا يُغَاثُوا بِمَا إِنْ كَالْمُهْلِ يَشْوِي الْوُجُوهِ بِئْسَ الشَّرَابِ وَسَاءَتْ مُرْتَفَقًا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ إِنَّا لَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا أولئك لهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتهم الأنهار يحلون فيها يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من سندس وإستبرق متكئين فيها على الأرائك نعم الثواب وحسنت مرتفقا واضرب لهم مثل الرجلين جعلنا لأحدهما جنتين من أعناب وحففناهما بنخل وجعلنا بينهما زرعا كلتا الجنتين آتت أكلها ولم تظلم 
شيئا وفجرنا خلالهما نهرا وكان له ثمر فقال لصاحبه وهو يحاوره أنا أكثر منك مالا وأعز نفرا ودخل جنته وهو ظالم لنفسه قال ما أظن أن تبيد هذه أبدا وما أظن الساعة قائمة ولئن رددت إلى ربي لأجدن خيرا منها منقلبا وما أظن وما أظن وما أظن الساعة وما أظن الساعة قائمة ولئن رددت إلى ربي لأجدن خيرا منها منقلبا قال له صاحبه وهو يحاوره أكفرت بالذي خلقك من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم سواك رجلا لكن هو الله ربي ولا أشرك بربي أحدا ولولا إذ دخلت جنتك قلت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله إن ترني أنا أقل منك مالا وولدا إن ترني إن ترني أنا أقل إن ترني إن ترني أنا أقل إن تكسر يفنانس رقيبك إياه إن ترني أنا أقل منك مالا وولدا فغسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنتك ويرسل عليها حسبانا من السماء فتصبح صعيدا زلقا فعسى ربي فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا يؤتيني خير يؤتيني فعسى خير فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنتك ويرسل عليها حسبانا من السماء فتصبح صعيدا زلقا أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا وأحيط بثمره فأصبح يقلب كفيه على ما أنفق فيها وهي خاوية على عروشها ويقول يا ليتني لم أشرك بربي أحدا ولم تكن له فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان منتصرا هنالك الولاية لله الحق هو خير ثوابا وخير عقبا جزاك الله خيرا أحسنت Are you reciting a for a specific reciter? Hafs, Warsh? I in the riwayah of Hafs. Hafs, yes. That's why I, I, I was hesitant to respond, Akhi, but since for Hafs, then يؤتي any خيرا the pronunciation of the kesra sometimes is pronounced as, as a ya, an additional letter. And uh, yeah, anyway, you know the saying that uh, when Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah was once uh, speaking uh, eloquent, eloquently, and one of the scholars passed by and said, uh, uh, "With that eloquence, uh, seek perfection." So this this slight yeah, any, uh, matter is it? Mashallah, tabarakallah. The perfection of your recitation, Mashallah, is beautiful. But the perfection further on uh, is, is sought after uh, with these slight matters <coughs> by the will of Allah Azza wa Jalla.
May Allah Azza wa Jal make you akhi and make us all of the people of the Quran Ahlul wa khasa and those who recite the Quran uh, and implement the Quran and live by it uh, in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad The brother recited, uh, may Allah reward him and all of us, those who are listening, the uh, part of the surah which now enters into the second form of tribulation. What can you derive? Question to all of us. What can you derive? Go ahead, Abu Abdullah. The second trial and tribulation is the trial and tribulation of dunya when it gets to the point that it causes you to commit an act of disbelief. Mm. It overwhelms you to the point that dunya is everything, your heart is fully absorbed by dunya, and you forget Allah and you make shirk in that sense too. Subhanallah. And not being grateful to your, the people around you and to what you've got um, that Allah provides you, a, 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 a that Allah provides you with his sustenance and these things that you have in your life. To exactly. neglect that and to not think about that. Beautifully to the said. point that you also forget the next life as well. You're so attached to this yes. life. Yes. Jazakallah. Yes. So the fitna here, the second fitna is the fitna of wealth. Fitna of wealth. These are two uh, 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 people. One is a believer. One is not. Uh, one is given more wealth than the other. He boasts. He said, Ana min kamala wa I have more wealth than you. I have uh, a greater... Uh, following, following and, and more people than you do. And I'm uh, uh, in, in a state far greater than you are. Arrogance. And uh, this is where Allah Azza wa Jal uh, gives the opportunity to the other uh, person or the other one who is a believer. He not only uh, dismissed the, the, the way that the person was, was uh, boasting, but he also even gave him advice, calling him back to the way of, of Allah, telling him, أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِنْ تُرَابِ have you just believed in the one who created you from dirt, from, from, from uh, dust, uh, from the earth, and then uh, a vile fluid, and then brought you into the state that you are in, a man, a human being? Is this, uh, is this the, the return that you give back to the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal? But the, the person uh, was, uh, was rejecting this uh, faith, and Allah Azza wa Jal made an example of him for us to understand that the tribulation of wealth and the tribulation of, of, of what Allah gives in this life needs to be sought after in the sense of pleasing Allah. Using it, taking it, bringing it in lawfully and giving it for the sake of Allah, using it for the means that please Allah Azza wa Jal in our lives and not to make it a means of one's uh, leaving the fold of Islam billah or one's uh, arrogance against others that uh, Allah provided for them certain things that they would uh, boast about this and make it a means of belittling other people. طيب, the third tribulation, keep in mind, we mentioned two tribulations. The first is tribulation of? Deen. Deen. First. Deen. The, the preservation of religion, faith. Number two, the, preserv uh, the, the wealth, fitna of wealth, the trial of wealth, how we will face the trial of wealth. And the deen, we said, are the youth who went to the cave. They preserved their deen by the will of Allah. Wealth, Allah gives us the example here. And then Allah tells us at the end, al-malu wal banun, your wealth and your offsprings that you have been given by Allah is the, uh, 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 the adornments. adornments of this life. And the adornments of this life is to be used in pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet Allah reminds us, Al Baqiyatu Salihat, Khayrun in the Rabbi Kathawabun wa Khayrun Amala. That really what will benefit you in the sight of Allah is Al Baqiyatu Salihat. Al Baqiyatu Salihat, brothers, is all righteous deeds that will remain for you on the Day of Judgment. Some scholars have limited them to saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْعَظِيمِ But in reality, these are the four baqiyatu salihat, the, the remembrances that many scholars repeat. But in reality, every righteous deed that we perform by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal is of the baqiyatu salihat. Ya yeah, Shaykh, uh, what brother recited, there is one thing which, something in it which is, 
very much connected with our routine matters, everyday life. The usage of the term mashallah and inshallah, whatever good happens to you is because of Allah. Yes. Whatever you plan in your life, it will materialize only, inshallah, with the yes. usage of inshallah. So the terms mashallah and inshallah are to be used very frequently in our daily Definitely. life. Yes, good reminder, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Good reminder, mashallah. <laughs> the third tribulation, brothers. Third tribulation is, you'll find this to be unique and, and uh, maybe unattended to when we recite this chapter. The third tribulation is in قوله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قلنا للملائكة استجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس كان من الجن ففسق عن أمر ربه. Behold, when Allah commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam, and they all prostrated save Shaytan. He was from the jinn. He refused. Now in this. And in the mentioning of this many a times in the Qur'an, there is a very clear understanding of racism. Or the concept of thinking of one's lineage, or one's tribe, or one's nationality, or one's race is better than the other. This is what shaitan said. He said, Ana khayrun min, I'm better than him. You created me from fire, and you created him from teen, from dust. Here we find the teaching of boasting that being better than anyone else because of some type of uh, uh, concept that humans uh, dwell on is unacceptable. The only criterion for who is better in the sight of Allah is the one who is righteous, the one who is pious, taqwa. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum. The most... Uh, righteous or the most noble amongst you in the sight of Allah Azawajal are those who are pious. This is the criterion. This is the ruling uh, criterion of who is best in the sight of Allah Azawajal. This is where we find today a common uh, practice amongst many people and this is dealt with in the third fitna of Surah Al-Kahf. And no wonder that it's a reminder, a weekly reminder. It could be even more than just a weekly reminder, more than a, a, once a week, but it could be a, a reminder that is recited uh, maybe even twice a week or more than that uh, to remind ourselves of the deen, of the wealth, and of the concept of humbleness in the sight of Allah. Further on, we go into the uh, third, tribu fourth tribulation. Who can, who can derive the fourth tribulation for us? Of course, the, the chapter doesn't only mention the tribulations, the fitna, but it also tells us, tells us how to repel this fitna. So you find, alhamdulillah, in, in every portion of this chapter, there's a, a, a rebuttal that comes back and tells us what is the antidote, what is the remedy for this trial, this fitna. So uh, further on, let's go to the, sec the fourth fitna. That is the fitna of ilm. Alien brothers. Some people think that when you knowledge. seek the knowledge, when you gain the knowledge, when you have the knowledge, you've reached that level that khalas, you don't have to worry about anything. Exactly. When you gain the knowledge, and the, not, gaining the knowledge is a virtue. <laughs> Seeking the knowledge is a responsibility. Allah is telling us first and foremost here, Musa salam is a prophet, a messenger of Allah. Not only a prophet and a messenger of Allah, but amongst the five mightiest messengers of Allah. Ulul Azmi al Rusul. And the third after Ibrahim. Some say that it was Nuh, but others say it's, it's Musa. So first we have Muhammad in preference, then uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and then Musa alayhi salam. And then some say Nuh, and some say Isa, with differences of opinion. But these five are the five mightiest messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal. Musa is the third, and yet, because Musa, when he was asked the question, is there anyone more knowledgeable than you, O Musa, in this dunya? He responded, no. no. That's where Allah 
now Allah Azza wa Jal is telling Musa there is and now you have to travel and you have to seek the knowledge and you have to go through that we're talking about the third most elite of mankind in the history of humanity this is how Allah is teaching us brothers Humble. seeking humbleness and seeking knowledge and it's a responsibility you have to seek the knowledge we don't stay you know free from any learning and then say I don't know I'm, I'm, I'm unaware of the teachings of the deen we have to seek the knowledge and then when you seek the knowledge humble yourself and accepting it and after accepting the knowledge recognize recognize that you are not the one who achieved all of this but it is because Allah has bestowed this favor upon you and this is where in surah uh, tabarak al-mulk where Allah says uh, say to them O Muhammad that all knowledge belongs to Allah I am merely a warner I am merely someone who Allah has bestowed his favor of this knowledge or this of course this is directed to the Prophet but it descends to all those followers after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that I merely am someone who is warning I don't claim that the possession of this knowledge is the achievement of myself but it's a favor from Allah Azza and I humble myself because I recognize that Allah is the one who gives and the one who uh, bestows whom he wills to bestow knowledge upon. The fifth tribulation, brothers. Anyone? Lack of patience. No? It's, it's within that fitna, but the, the greater concept? Lack of patience, lack of sabr. Uh, within the um, uh, sub-themes, but the fifth main theme of Surah Al-Kahf is the tribulation of authority, brothers. Dhul Qarnayn, the story of Dhul Qarnayn, when Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the story of Dhul Qarnayn, Dhul Qarnayn was given the sovereignty over the earth. He was the ruler over the earth by the will of Allah, not only a specific country or area, but this, this really tells us that we are responsible for the people that we have authority over. In my own home, in my office, in my uh, shop, if I'm, a, if I'm a, a merchant, anywhere I have the authority over one or two or three people or more, then you are someone who has authority, and this fitna involves you. Be accountable. You'll be accountable, and the guidance is there for you. It's amazing how these fitnas, brothers, are mainly uh, you know, involved in, 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 in the everyday life endeavors of, of, of believers. So it's a, it's a, it's a reminder, it's, it's a continuous reminder, a weekly reminder. If you have this in your life, then Allah is teaching us how to repel it. And if you fall short, then correct yourself, rectify yourself. This is one of the, one of the great reminders of this chapter. This chapter, brothers, I would advise to go back, read the, the, the tafsir, read the, the commentary closely, once, twice, even thrice if you can. Recite the chapter as much as you can, especially on Jum'ah, if, if this is possible. It'll have an effect on your life. It'll have an effect on the way you treat other people. It'll have an effect on the perspective of life that you will, will, will start to have uh, uh, and, and the difference of, of matters that, that the dunya will not have any value anymore for you, inshallah, by the will of Allah. Knowledge will be very important in your life. But keep it as a reminder. This is, this is how the Qur'an brothers, even those who memorize the Qur'an, if they don't recite it continuously, it's, for, it's forgotten. And reflect upon it. Reflect, but the, the continuity of reciting and reading the Qur'an is the method of reaping this, this understanding. If you don't read the Qur'an continuously, whether it's the transliteration or the translation or the tafsir, the commentary, the, the benefit is reaped by doing so. As long as you come with this understanding that you need to attach yourself to this book of Allah and continuously take from it the benefit and the guidance, then this will be the case in your life by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the further one goes from this book, Allah, the further they go from Allah Azza wa Jal. It's amazing how one of the great scholars uh, uh, in earlier times is cited to say when he, they, he was asked the question, uh, what do you advise us to do if we are seeking guidance? He lifted the Qur'an, he said, the guidance is here. 
You just need to open it and read it and, and reflect on it and, and find the, the guidance within and live your life according to it. Wallahi, anything else will, will become uh, meaningless. meaningless. Only what Allah guides you in, in this Quran will become of value in your life. I ask Allah to make this gathering a gathering pleasing to Allah. Yes, yeah, Sheikh, one thing, please. Go ahead. This is when we observe minutely around us what propaganda is being followed to malign Islam and... Can you repeat, Akhi? When we see around us and we happen to be a bit minute guy when it comes to observation, then one thing which is used quite, quite often by the ones who are trying to malign Islam and the teachings of Islam is the cohesiveness of what you said of Quran. For instance, let me clarify it with example. Everything is there, but they would like to take a particular part of a particular ayah which talks about something in specific, Let, let's say about jihad, and use that part of the ayah to convey to others Islam is all about fighting and terrorism. And they would l intentionally hide the other part of the ayah which talks about the prerequisites of that particular thing. So when it comes to jihad, so cohesiveness is there, but those who are following a obnoxious agenda are only highlighting that particular aspect and leaving the totality of the ayah. I think this is a challenge. Well, it is, Akhi, and this is, uh, this is common. It's been going on since the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how the people of Quraysh, when Allah revealed that the uh, guardians of hellfire are 19, to Sa'at Ashar, and they started mocking and saying, one of them said that if there are only 19, one said, I'll take care of 17, and you guys take care of the other two. So, the, and of course, 19 doesn't necessarily mean the number 19 but maybe the, the number and the, the magnificence of the angels and so on and so forth. So this is common, Akhi, of the non-believers to look at the Qur'an and take what they want and dismiss what they don't want. Yes. And, and they do this to, uh, as you said, malign uh, the message of the Qur'an or to distort some of the teachings of the deen of Islam uh, revealed in the Qur'an, like jihad, like the concept of polygamy. Uh, they also like to... Uh, bring uh, the uh, uh, foul or the faulty commentators uh, uh, that have taken from the people of the book prior. Right. For example, in Surah Noon, Noon, Wal Qalami Wa Ma'asturun, uh, some of the commentators have made the mistake of taking from the people of the book prior, uh, depending on the saying of the Prophet Muhammad of Hadithu an Bani Israel wa la Haraj. You can mention uh, the stories of the children of Israel, no problem. Uh, but uh, uh, don't believe them and don't belie them. Uh, it's not to be taken as serious as the Qur'an and the Sunnah, but as long as it doesn't contradict with the Qur'an and the Sunnah, you can mention them. Some of these matters are like uh, in this surah, the commentator said that the earth is on, uh, on the horn of a, of a, of a bull, yeah. and the bull is, 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 is traveling. This is nonsense. The Qur'an doesn't say this. But this was uh, uh, something that one of the uh, people of the book, the Jews of that time, who tried to distort the message of the Qur'an, as there, you mentioned, he mentioned that this was something that is available in our prior books, and you should put this as a tafsir. Yeah. So this is now dismissed, and it's been dismissed you know, for a while. Anyway, we have uh, lunch ready, brothers. Let's go ahead and... Uh, get our eats on like they say. Shukran. Hayyakallah. Ahlul sana. Alikus salam. Ahlul sana.
Yeah, Allah. So nice we'll brothers, uh, meet the new brother with the us. New brother, yeah. What's his name again? Fahim. Fahim. It must be I'm something from in the water. From 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 the water is not well. Okay. Nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's about to be something in the water. Really? You have to move there. I have to move there. You guys should move there. Hey, Maratania, control. I need to move to South Africa. You guys are dynamite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,